you're gonna be out for a couple weeks and then that's when your gains really take a hit. You're going catabolic. Yo, what is up fam and welcome to today's video. This one's gonna be short and sweet. You guys already saw the thumbnail. It's about biceps and the most common mistakes that people make when doing a simple bicep curl, whether it's with dumbbells or barbell. And when I'm actually talking about these common mistakes, I'm gonna play a clip of me actually doing the wrong version so you guys can actually see what's going on. I'll play like a couple different angles and stuff so you guys can see how not to do it. And I'm just gonna talk about it and say why you shouldn't be doing it. And then at the end, I'll show you the best way to just target your biceps overall. I'm not saying we're gonna target the short head specifically or the long head specifically. I'm just saying how to target your biceps and get overall development without injuring yourself because a lot of the time we talk about form, but like form's important to grow the muscle and reduce the risk of injury. You know what? Because if you get an injury, bruh, you're gonna be out for a couple of weeks and then that's when your gains really take a hit. You're going catabolic because you got no stimulus. So form is important for your gains to reduce injury and posture. That's actually something I've been working on a lot lately is because when you have good posture and like your muscles are actually balanced out properly, you're gonna have a better physique than someone who's like rotated forward or is like just has a crazy lordotic curve and they're fucking like, like this, doing exorcism shit. But yeah, so nobody wants to be like that. Anyways, let's get into the bicep movements. The first one is the momentum curl, and this one is done all the time. But I'm gonna say something about the momentum curl. If you do it properly, cheat curls, at the end of a set, because maybe you're on the fourth set and you wanna get a couple extra reps, using momentum is okay, as long as you have some control, at least on the negative. But if you're just swinging away and just, you're gonna, you're gonna be injuring yourself, especially if you have super heavy weight, like you're trying to do this with a plate on each side, barbell curling in the squat rack and nobody likes that person, then yeah, you deserve to be injured. Just kidding, don't, don't get injured because then I'm probably liable. I don't know, I don't know how this shit works. The momentum curl, play some clips and you guys will see exactly what I'm doing. You don't wanna do this, you wanna make sure that your glutes are engaged your core is engaged and you're bringing your shoulders down and keeping everything nice and tight because we want to isolate the biceps. That's the whole point. So what you're seeing right now, what I'm doing is not good. And I'm going to show you in one of these clips how to do a proper momentum curl because what you're supposed to do is curl the weight up with momentum and then on the way down, you're going to control the negative and then as you get to the bottom, you can use the momentum again to kind of swing it up and you're going to get these extra reps and completely exhaust the muscle. But I wouldn't really do this in like your first, second, third set. I would do this at the end of your set to get that like extreme failure, right? Because you don't want to gas yourself on the first set and then your other sets are just absolute garbage. The next one is the shoulder curl. Well, your shoulder is not actually curling, but it's pretty much like a shoulder press. But before I get into this one, Smash the like button, subscribe if you are new, and yeah, help me because then that way I can help you guys and it's just like a win-win, you know what I'm saying? So anyways, the shoulder press curl. That is pretty much when you do a proper curl at the bottom, but as you get to the top, and you're seeing this in the video, that you start to elevate the elbows and almost go into a shoulder press. So you're doing a shoulder raise, you're doing shoulder flexion, right? So when you actually do shoulder flexion, the long head of the bicep is going to be involved, but the thing is, if you're doing it over and over and you keep on elevating your elbows, you're gonna be targeting your delts a lot and they can actually get tired before you even target your biceps properly. So you might exhaust your shoulders and then you're gonna stop early and not get the full stimulus on your bicep. You don't wanna be exhausting energy on a different muscle when you're trying to isolate the biceps. So take your damn shoulders out of it, stop elevating them and doing like a shoulder press kind of dumbbell curl or whatever and just do a regular curl. I'm gonna show you guys at the end because right now these are just all the mistakes. Number three is the drag curl. Drag curls are good, but when you do them with improper form, that's when they're not good. So what happens, you're gonna see this in the video, is as I'm drag curling, you're noticing my shoulder go forward. It's almost rotating forward beyond my chest and that can cause a lot of shoulder problems. When you're doing a drag curl, you wanna think about bringing your chest through your shoulders and then dragging the weight up along your body. You don't want your shoulders to fall forward and then create that impingement in between pretty much your, your chest and your shoulder because you're letting your chest 
cave in. You don't want to do that. Stand nice and tall, keep your chest up, and then drag the weight and kick your elbows back. Number four, this, that's eight. Number four is the probably not common, common, not thought about one. It's the one that people just never think about and it's forearm supination. So what that is, and you're gonna see it in the video, is basically you're tucking your elbows in towards your body. The thing is, you can still do it the other way. Say if you wanna target the long head of the bicep or if you wanna target the brachialis, which is pretty much in between your tricep and the long head of your bicep. It gives you that like nice, like, you know, like this, look, right here. This thing right there, yeah, so if you do like a hammer curl, then you're going to target a part of your forearm and then the part of your bicep that is in between your tricep and your butt. That part, look at the, right there. I'm not ultra shredded right now. You guys can see it, right? Okay. Even just when you're trying to target biceps overall, just like in general, you're not trying to target the in-between portion, then you're going to do it with forearm supination because your biceps aid in forearm supination. So to activate it completely, you want to incorporate that and then do the curl. So in that way, you're going to get the peak contraction at the top. So now when we get rid of all of these mistakes and we actually want to do a proper curl that's going to target both the long head and the short head, reduce injury and give you the best overall gains. I recommend doing it with a barbell because it's easier to progressively overload. I also just like the forearm supination on it because you can feel like you're like bending the bar because that's what you're going to do, right? If you're holding it like this, you're going to think about bending the bar and you can see it in the clip that I'm going to play for you guys. You think about bending the bar and your elbows are going to tuck in towards your body. That engages your biceps. Then from there, you want to keep your arms close to your body and your shoulders down. You don't want them to elevate or you don't want your scapulas to elevate. And you're going to curl all the way to the top, but without letting your elbows start to drive up you can let your elbows come forward just slightly and that's going to incorporate the long end of the bicep but the thing is if you start to go too high you're just going to start working the anterior delts so the best thing to do is just keep it at the side of your body and curl it you're just using the elbow joint to move and that's how you're going to target the biceps the best way simple as that don't do the mistakes if you want to isolate the short head or the long head of the bicep there are tons of different ways you can do that but i'll save that for another video or if you guys are actually interested in that i can show you guys exactly how to isolate certain parts what angles because different angles and different grip positions are going to change the activation on your bicep and that's how you're going to get the different parts working and, and get the whole entire bicep you know what i'm saying because if you just do one angle one type of curl you're not going to get the best overall bicep development i'm just giving you guys the simplest the best one for progressive overload the staple this one should be in your bicep workout no matter what like i said short and sweet got to the point gave you guys the value now if you could just smash the like button subscribe and i will see you guys in the next one peace out i can't see the look like i'm mad now mad now they want me to fail i'm busy feeling myself understand that i'm really on a way up way up way up way up oh am i cooling on a way